What's going on guys? So in front of me, you were looking at my new media vehicle. This was provided to me from the folks over at Toyota to review and evaluate for a week. What you were looking at is a truck that should be no surprise on my channel because I actually went out and did the media drive event with them over uh, north of San Antonio, Texas and got to spend a lot of time in these trucks looking around them. I actually have a chassis video where you get to see what the entire chassis is all about, which was really cool. This specific truck in front of you is unique for folks who may have a previous generation Tundra, not because it's the all new 2022 model, but mainly because it has the longer six and a half foot bed on it. So typically if you get the crew cab or the crew max, you wouldn't be able to get that really long bed on the back. You'd have to stick with the five and a half footer. But on this one, you actually get the six and a half foot bed on the back, which is really, really cool. Now, what's nice about this truck is from a overall size perspective, it's far more in line with trucks from Ford, Chevy and Ram where you've had that longer bed option. And I know a lot of folks who, you know, plan on towing an RV or towing trailers, they prefer that longer wheelbase because it does give you a bit more stability and it can help you counteract some of the forces of sway. But I'm gonna have this truck for a while and we're gonna talk about it on this incredibly windy day. Let's go over some of the details. Hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so this truck, it is our premium package. 1794 is named after the ranch that the factory that Toyota builds the Tundra at in San Antonio or south of San Antonio is, um, is located. And this specific truck is equipped with the iForce 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. Now, a lot of people say, you know what, how much power can a twin turbo V6 really have in a truck like this? Well, you might be surprised to know that it's 389 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. These things are absolute power monsters. And when I drove it up in San Antonio, that's the one thing you absolutely are 100% clear with when you drive behind the wheel of this is that you have no lack of power. 10-speed automatic transmission with sequential shifting. This is a four-wheel drive package, even though at least on the side and the front, you can't really tell. The lack of tow hooks, which is something I've been a bit critical about, um, definitely makes it appear as if it may not be a four-wheel drive model, but this specific one is a four-wheel drive. Of course, with a lot of your lighter duty trucks, this truck now has that start-stop feature where when you come to a red light, it's gonna turn off on you, but you can disable that during a trip, which is really nice. Looking around the side, this is an absolutely beautiful color. They call this magnetic gray metallic. You can certainly tell it has that longer wheelbase because the truck does appear much longer than you typically would expect when you see Toyota Tundras. And what I like about the six and a half foot bed is the fact that it makes the truck look a little bit more filled out. Before when you had like a crew max, the, uh, the bed of the truck looked kind of short considering it had that really long crew cab back area. And you know, when you look at trucks, you kind of expect them to have a certain look, a certain size to them. And this one certainly fulfills that need if you're looking for a truck that looks a little bit more substantial. Walking around this truck and kind of giving you a better perspective of things, what Toyota was going for when uh, they designed this truck was more of that chiseled kind of plugged into effect, basically where everything was interconnected in a way that looked very graceful, but at the same time, very mechanical. And I think they accomplished that. Coming around front, it's got parking sensors up front. Some really, really cool LED lights up here as well. Nice grill. Has kind of that, uh, again, that interconnected look to it, kind of like chain link, which is really nice. You can see the fog lights integrated into the bottom portion of the grill, all LED. About to get blown over by this wind. You got your 20 inch wheels, your 1794 badging on the side, which looks really nice. Very, very nice truck. What I really like is the fact that this truck does come equipped with tow mirrors. That is absolutely a huge plus. In a lot of trucks, you just don't have them anymore. And in some cases, it's not even optional. So I definitely appreciate the fact that they, uh, that they put tow mirrors on this truck. You also get the auto deploying running boards on the side. Very nice. On your higher end luxury trim packages, this is certainly something that's not new, but it's always nice to see when truck manufacturers do it. Coming around to the back. So the back of the truck is, is beautiful. It's sculpted really well, and it certainly stands out when you're on the road. This is really the only area on the exterior where you're gonna see your four x four badging, but something that's unique with this truck versus the pre-production models when I was uh, viewing them 
in a San Antonio is this feature right here. So you got your corner step here, and this is certainly not unique amongst trucks. You can get this on a lot of trucks. However, what is very unique is when you pop the tailgate, it comes out. So that is really nice. So they've made it an electronically deploying step on the side. You don't even have to think about it. The only thing you probably would have to think about is if you're backing up to something, you're getting really close or a curb, you definitely don't want to make contact with it because that's sticking out because it does come off the side about maybe three or four inches. So just keep that in mind. Another little nugget that was on the uh, pre-production truck is this feature right here. I think that is absolutely brilliant. That is probably among my top 10 features I've seen on trucks in the past 10 years. I love that feature. And if you don't know what that is, that's that scenario where you're carrying a bunch of heavy stuff in your hands and you can't get to your key fob to drop the tailgate and you can't get to the button to drop the tailgate. You just walk right here, you punch this and it opens up your tailgate. To me, that is brilliant. That is something that, that is just so thoughtful and I think makes a lot of sense. I mean, it just makes your life a lot easier, especially if you're trying to get heavy stuff onto the tailgate. And those of you with trucks know exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, if you say that you've never been in a scenario where you've had your hands full of stuff and you're trying to load it into the bed of your truck, but your hands are full and you either got to set it down or awkwardly lean it somewhere, this is super cool. And what's nice about it is you can just hit it with your elbow so you don't have to actually hit it with your hand. Love that feature. The tailgate is also capable of dropping with the remote. Just like most of the newer trucks, you can punch and hold the button, the tailgate will drop down. Um, you're gonna have all of your surround cameras on this truck. So that is something that's really nice. You now have 360 degree cameras. You have this massive LED light strip across the top here that will illuminate the bed. And for those of you who are wondering, this is a composite bed. So this is no longer a steel or an aluminum or whatever you might have thought it would have been, but it is a composite bed. Utilizes the same material that you see in the Tacoma. I think it's a little thicker though. You still have all your stake pockets right here so you can put dividers in place. Um, what is kind of interesting though is the fact that if you look at it, it, it's kind of flush right here. Where on some trucks it carves in to kind of meet the interior dimensions and lines of the vehicle and it gives you a little bit more room. But what I can say is that it feels very wide. It feels like these side pillars are a little bit narrower, so you get a lot of width in here, and it's actually surprisingly wider than you might think. I like how they put the bed lighting kind of in the midpoint of the truck pointing in as opposed to the very back right here that point forward. The reason for that is, is if you have something tall right here, if you have your lights in the corner, it blocks the lights going into the actual bed. So I always appreciate it when they uh, do something thoughtful like that and they move the lights up a little bit tailgate is absolutely assisted because it feels super lightweight and that just means they've done a good job with the uh, dampening system with the torsion rod and the assist to, to help it go up. I love the LED lights. Nice effect right here. It gives you a cool pattern where it kind of goes in a row whenever you are uh, turning. I love the fact that they've done that. Also your reverse lights are right here which is really cool. Got a two inch trailer receiver on this truck. Um, not sure how I feel about not having a steel bumper anymore. I mean, I'm sure it's reinforced back there, but that's plastic. That's plastic. That's plastic. Now, I don't care about the center part being plastic, but I really wish that they still put a steel bumper, or at least had a steel bumper option, along with the tow hooks up front. And then what's interesting is they got this spot right here that looks very similar to the other side, except there's no button right here. It would have been nice to put a button on both sides since they already have this little spot available right here. Or that would actually be another option for maybe turning on and off the bed lights. You know, so if you want to turn them on, you have a little exterior button to be able to access it if you have the key fob in your pocket or something like that. So this will have air suspension. It is a multi-link air suspension in the back. And up front, I believe, gonna have coil suspension yeah so up front so up front is your traditional coil suspension in the back is a multi-link solid axle air suspension let's take a look inside of this truck and see what it's all about all right so now we're gonna step inside of this brand new 2022 Toyota Tundra 1794 package take a look at the interior this is absolutely gorgeous and what's nice about it is this is a finalized product. This is a production product versus some of the trucks that we were driving in uh, that were pre-production that still had some materials that they were still trying to replace with the correct material. But this is actually something that you could buy at a dealership, you know, showroom. And this is really, really cool, or at least these days order. 
You have all your memory seats. You have some nice wood in the door. Very, very nice two-tone appearance to the door. I love the trim work. Um, I love the buttons up here. You still have a blank spot here. I really wish that if there was no button here, the blank spot just wouldn't be here. There wouldn't be anything there. You have the ability to turn on and off the auto-deploying steps on the side. I like that they put a button for it. Most of the vehicles now, you have to go through menus on the screen. Um, you have your uh, high center mount light right here. Your trip features, you can turn the lights on, you can adjust your mirrors in and out with, uh, with this feature here. Very, very cool heated steering wheel, and you can turn off the, uh, the auto on off engine feature when you get to red lights. Plus you have your 120 outlet control right here. Everything's pretty much a screen in this truck. So if I start it up, huge screen back there. And this is all gonna vary depending on the trim model, but this specific trim model certainly has a ton of information available and uh, utilizes this really large screen. All your steering wheel controls. Going over here, check this thing out. This is a 14 inch display. Absolutely massive. It's all touch screen, which is really nice. For a long time, manufacturers were going with a knob and a remote that you have to kind of navigate everything with. But I love the fact that this is touch screen. Very, very nice. You have all your climate control features down here. I love it when they separate climate control features from your touch screen, because these are things that you want to get to very quickly, as well as your volume. It's an actual volume knob. On some vehicles, some Honda vehicles more than anything, it seems as if they want to put the volume controls up here or just on the steering wheel. And if I'm pulling into a bank or a drive through or something like that, I want to be able to turn my volume down super fast without having to worry about trying to find a touch screen volume control feature. Then you have all your, again, climate controls, dual zone naturally. You're gonna have USB port right here. Down here you have your electric parking brake, uh, trailer tow. This right here is gonna be that really cool kind of surround camera feature. Check that out. That is, uh, that's pretty insane. And you can change the color of your truck. So if you wish you had a red truck, you can make the truck red on your picture at least. Yeah, so that's pretty dang advanced. All right, so looking further down, you have your wireless charger right here. Nice pocket. I love the fact that you can put your phone here without having some kind of weird flap or something that needs to be open or covering it up. That is super cool. Then you have this massive door. This thing's huge. That covers up your dual cup holders. The ability to switch your drive modes. This is essentially where you would switch to the different types of drive conditions that you want to select. Sport mode, Sport Plus. Normal, comfort, eco, and it adapts the suspension and the shock absorbers to uh, to those different settings as well. Over here, you can actually change from two, four high, or four low. And then you have your tow haul mode right here. In the center, I don't know how I feel about this pocket. And this almost feels like it should lift up, which it does. So you have a little tiny spot here, I guess, for change. It would have been nice to have like a little rubber mat down here in case you put change here so it's not, you know, rattling around whenever you're, you're driving and going over bumps. That is real wood. That's very, very uh, solid feeling. And then right here, you know, I get the point of it that it gives you a little bit more storage, but I think it would have been nice to have maybe this slide back and forth to cover up what's here because sometimes you want to be able to work on a computer you want to be able to write something down and you'd have to do it right here because you don't have anything right here to kind of back you up unless you do it over here on this door which is kind of in your way a little bit all right here you can uh, raise or lower your vehicle and then you have the manual capability or to do it manually or automatically all right, so this is interesting. So this piece right here actually slides back if you want to get into your glove box. And then here's your glove box with, again, more storage. A lot of different levels of storage as well in here. Let's see here. This moves, so you can obviously do something to reposition that or just get it out of the way if you want this to be more open. You have another level right here. You know, they used to make this so it could hold files, I believe, and I don't think you can do that anymore because I don't see any little clips at the end. you got your change holder, USB, USB-C. And then you have two more cup holders back here. 
as well as your two-tone leather, which looks absolutely beautiful. That's very cool. Let's explore here a little bit and see what it's all about. It's telling you all your information related to your trip, which is nice. Phone mode, music. So before we hop in the back seat, you take a look at this. It is a camera, just like a lot of your higher end trucks. This isn't really new. So, you know, this is a feature you see on a lot of vehicles, but it is kind of nice to see. Um, the only thing about this is you don't really get perspective. So if you move your head around, you're not gonna be able to see the different angles like you can on a standard mirror, but it is pretty cool. You have all your sunroof controls and it is a panoramic sunroof. You have sound deadening as well as Bluetooth microphones and things all around the vehicle. All right, let's hop in the back and take a look at it. First of all, I really like that 1794 edition badging that they put there. And I love this belt design that they kind of have trimming through the actual uh, glove compartment area. Absolutely gorgeous. Plus take a look at these floor mats. Very, very nice. All right, let's hop in the back, see what it's all about. All right, taking a look in the back here beautifully laid out tons and tons and tons of leg room you got a little lever here it's probably to release this when it's up good amount of storage underneath here as well you have your toyota first aid kit you have these little dividers you can pop into place if you want to move the spacing around yep and that drops that down and i imagine you can probably tilt the seat forward as well Got your JBL subwoofer back here. You got a little bit of room behind the seat, not a tremendous amount. A feature that I didn't go over, but is absolutely uh, awesome, and Toyota kind of pioneered this, is this whole back window can lower down and raise back up. So you don't have the typical split window like you have on my truck and most trucks. This whole window will lower down and go up, which is awesome. So even though I love the trim work and how you have these darker and lighter tones mixed, I'm not sure how I feel about this from a, a color perspective. It looks kind of interesting, at least from how it's working here, that band right there. It almost looks like I have a bicycle helmet or a motorcycle helmet looking back at me. Hopping in the back, rear air conditioning vents, which I can appreciate. Nice floor mats all the way around. It's kind of interesting how they gave it kind of this roped look on rubber. Doors are trimmed off very nicely. Oh, love this feature. You don't see it very often on trucks. Check this out. That is super cool. It's a shade. Very, very nice. My wife will absolutely love that feature. Looking over here, you have your air conditioning controls right here. 400 watt 110 or 120 volt outlet there. USB, USB-C. Most of the trucks I've seen don't put little covers on them either. And this one does. Air conditioning vents back here, which I can always appreciate. Can you have another little screen on that side as well? Plenty of legroom. I mean, plenty of legroom. You, you really don't need any more legroom than this in a pickup truck. Really like that. Up here you have your little dome lights. Very, very nice. And from a <laughs> interior perspective, you know, how many folks would think this is the interior of a pickup truck? You know, in 2022, it's crazy how far along, you know, the insides of these trucks have gotten from a luxurious perspective, just how much nicer they look. They, they do such a great job in, interior-wise to make these trucks feel like you're getting a lot for your money. And I can honestly say that this is an absolutely beautiful interior. And again, this truck is just so quiet. It absolutely is. Now, I know some people are going to miss that V8. They're going to miss the sound of a V8. They're going to want a V8. Uh, Toyota no longer offers a V8 in their Tundra. Um, they opted for a little bit better fuel economy, um, but they also can get a lot more power out of a V6, especially a twin turbo. And because this engine is largely based on some of the really great things they've done with the ultra-reliable Lexus lineup, because of course Toyota owns Lexus, um, you have an engine in here that is arguably one of the most reliable engines you could put in a vehicle. So there's a lot of reasons why you might like a V6 if you're getting it from a company like Toyota who has a reputation for building phenomenally well-built and super reliable engines. Very, very cool. 
And if you want to know how much this truck costs, let's take a look at the really wrinkled up Moroni sticker. So this has a MSRP of $66,395 right there. So it has the $1,645 advanced package, which is the load leveling rear height control air suspension, the adaptive uh, variable suspension, and 10 inch color heads up display. That's really nice. That's something I didn't see up there because it wasn't on, but right above the steering wheel on the windshield, it's gonna have a heads up display to give you information like speed, direction, or what the speed limit is. It's very nice to have actually as well as a bed mat. The bed mat's $195, but it has to probably be one of the thickest rubber bed mats I've seen in a pickup truck. So you're getting a pretty high quality bed mat. Anyways, I'd love to know your thoughts. Leave a comment below. What do you think about this truck? Super cool, lots to like about it. Uh, I've spent a lot of time in these trucks already, but this is really cool to see a production model, what it looks like, what you get, some of the really cool little touches, the tailgate stuff, the, the step on the side. Um, the displays, all the different things that, uh, that they're improving on these from a technology perspective. And again, one of the nice things is if you're getting it from a Toyota, you're, you're getting a really reliable vehicle because that's what Toyota is known for. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. Stay tuned and subscribe to see the next video where we actually take this thing out on the road and see what it's all about. And I'm going to try to come up with some really innovative ideas for uh, testing this thing while we have it out here. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.